was asking this me. I get to shape policy and teach people rights from wrong, Granddad and no, Grandma. It's not the same thing. So what's the difference, Jay There's nothing wrong with that. I know we both agree, but We disagreed about the elections of 1988 and 1992. Wait. So where's the videos, JR? There's nothing wrong with that. I know we both disagreed with the elections of 1988 and 1992. But those things have changed, Christine said. That's right, Christine. Times are changing, JR said. 8 p.m. Upstairs, Jr. is back at his think pad again, coming through his government, government notes. He'd been thinking about the jabs and barbs he'd been receiving all afternoon after dinner for his interest in public affairs. Except his father was definitely for it. Kyle had definitely uh, hurled some insults at JR during the football game. And so that's why he went out to ride Bandit. The only other man in the family who stood up for him was Uncle Carl. who took an active role, while Jim, his father, only played a passive role. And now we go on to November 26th. 7.55 a.m. JR sits down with his mother and grandmother having blueberry muffins for breakfast. What do you have going on today, JR? Betsy asked him. Well, I figured I would ride Bandit this morning a little bit. And then I want to study. But I'm having dinner with Kim tonight, JR said. No bad or Jim Bob? Thank God, Elizabeth said. No, I meet with them tomorrow. And so we're going uh, to about like Saturday night to help work out my, on my term paper. Keeping tech to key to the condo. Just make sure you and your friends don't trash it. You can take the key to the condo. You just make sure you and your friends don't trash it, Jim said. By 9 a.m., JL returns from a short ride on Bandit. So he goes to the IBM ThinkPad upstairs to look once again over his government notes. He knows that the next three days of school will just be final review. So he continues his final review. Meanwhile, in his office building in downtown Midland, Jim is having a meeting with State Senator uh, Teal Bibbins, who assures Jim that in spite of Governor Ann Richards' The oil and ranching businesses would be industries would remain intact. Nine twenty five AM uh, 
Carol decides uh, to go on another ride getting restless. Betsy is on the ranch gathering mules and bulls to take to the to the slaughter for butchers. Only 25% of those would go to the butcher today. Betsy is relieved to have Kyle watching him. Bandit could easily tell that JR was restless, so he galloped at a slow pace to calm him down. 10 10 a.m. JR stops Bandit and goes to his father's old RV that he had purchased back in 1981. They used to go to the Rio Grande River every summer until his father purchased a house in Gainesville at Lake Texoma. Now the place held fishing gear for when they were to go to take some for Christmas. 10.40 a.m. J.R. decides to go swimming in the Swingfield swimming pool. It had been indoors since December 1989. 11.40 a.m. J.R. sits down to lunch with Betsy and Kyle. So you're heading back so you're heading back tomorrow, Kyle uh, taunted. Yes, Jarrell said. I just wish you didn't have to have Brad Wynn and Wynn and Horton to stay the night. You know stupid Jim Bob will ask for more than you can give. And I can't stand Brad, Kyle said. It's a family cow. Uh, it's a family condo, cow. And JR lives in Lubbock. So go easy on him, Betsy said. When are you going to learn to stay out of my business? JR said. Hey! Kyle said, grabbing him. It's because I care. Blackmail is no way to get what you want this time, Kyle, Betsy said. I know you blackmailed Christine two years ago, so knock it off. picks Jr. up at the ranch and they dragged off to Wallenberger to have uh, one big dinner together. At least Steve please, at least At least stick with the plan. No Brad and Jim all coming with us, Gerald said. We are going to join them tomorrow, so let's forget about them, Kim said. 3 p.m. At Waterburger, Jr. and Ken order a huge meal. Two burgers, two french fries, and a platter of cinnamon rolls. The aim of the afternoon and the evening was to pay was to pay ten thousand and sit and talk. Meanwhile, in Midland, Jim is meeting with State Representative Buddy West, who is also reassuring Jim that the ranching and oil industries would remain intact. Six twenty p.m. Jo and Ken had some dinner. 
and then returned to their games, being joined briefly at the table by a young man by the name of Nicholas Bard, who is also a public affairs student from UT Austin. Nicholas Bard would later become a summer intern for the SBA in Washington, D.C. In, labor, in the Labor Department of the Clinton Administration. 6.50 p.m. J.R. and Ken are annoyed at how Nicholas is talking to this young, uh, young woman. Luckily, they left the restaurant and saw Ken and JR have a more quiet uh, atmosphere. He's looking for trouble, JR said. Not necessarily, Ken said. He'll use a condom. That's the problem, JR said. Kids will do it anyway, JR, you know that, Ken said. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Jim and Betsy, Kyle and Madison watch a racy action adventure movie. Seven fifteen PM. Jar and Ken return back to the ranch, playing a game of the Monopoly. The movie is still going on in the den. So they go upstairs to play. Christine joins them to give uh, these men some competition. Of all the friends J.R. brought home from school, Christine and Kyle locked Ken. 7.40 p.m. Betsy goes upstairs with a plate of brownies for J.R., Ken, and uh, Christine. It's clear that J.R. is losing big time to uh, Christine and Ken. 8.50 p.m. J.R. is the clear winner, surprisingly, with Ken landing, landing on Park Place and Christine landing on Mediterranean Avenue. J.R. becomes the surprising upset winner. The game over, J.R. and Ken gather around J.R.'s think pad, brainstorming about speech topic ideas. J.R. decides on the topic of ethics and public affairs in political dialogue. You go, J.R., Ken said. Tell the faculty how it is. Now, if I can pass my government term paper, we have a, we have a winner, J.R. said. You will, but don't just depend on Brad and Jim Bob to help you uh, pass that term paper. Now we're at the, toward the end of the home stretch. Hmm. <laughs> Jimmy spoke Paul, but we're going to correct it. November 27th. 4.45 a.m. Claude picks up Jim at the ranch and they drive out to the Midland International Airport to get ready to fly to Chicago. Meanwhile, JR wakes up. He takes out his laptop and goes straight to the P PRS uh, PRSA BBS service to copy an article.